Hello, fellow crocheters. Um, this is a new version of the how to know if your yarn is going to pull video because the last one got corrupt on my phone somehow. Um, unfortunately, today there is no adorable four-year-old because she is already in bed, um, but I'm going to see how I can do with uh, some self-camera uh, action here. So first things first, here's a bunch of different things that I have been pulling lately so you guys get an idea of the different things that can be pulled and mostly uh, this is to demonstrate here this particular blanket. I made it out of this yarn I got at AC Moore Stitch Studio. I'm still working on it. It's only about one skein through um, but I'm using it, an end hook, a 10 millimeter hook here and you can see that um, in a lot of this I'm only getting one or two moss stitches per color in this blanket, so it really doesn't matter how long your color changes are as long as you can get one clean moss stitch out of each color. Of course, if you're only getting one moss stitch out of it, you're going to see that this pattern is a little bit muddy. It's not quite as distinct as some of the other patterns um, because you're going to have to be super, super careful about lining up those stitches and the moss stitch is going to sort of obscure it a little bit. The other thing I want to show you guys is that you can absolutely pull any yarn no matter how long the color changes. This is a striping yarn. This is Carrie Ann Simply Soft Stripes and it's in the keys. Um, and this is going to be a zigzag piece. It's a little bit longer than my table here. Um, and you can see I'm getting about uh, somewhere between 25 and 27 stitches out of this. I think I'm working this one with an H hook. Um, so you are definitely going to be able to pull anything longer. Now, I know there are a lot of people concerned about, you know, well, the lengths of the colors within my yarn are not consistent. So how am I going to be able to pull that? But really, the only thing that the length of the change within the yarn is going to tell you is how many particular stitches you're going to get. So if you look at here, this one is the Carrion Simply Soft, and it's in the MASH camo. Um, this one, the color changes approximately the same length, so I'm getting three stitches out of the gray here. Green's a little bit shorter than the gray, so I'm only getting two stitches. Let me see if I can pull some of this out for you so you can sort of see that comparison. Uh, give me one second here as I pull some yarn out and match these up. So you'll see that, hopefully you'll see this, um, your green and your gray. Oop focus there for me camera you see the brown is a little bit longer than the gray uh, the green is a little bit shorter than the gray here not doing a good job focusing for me um, I'm going to show you this in a second when I turn the camera around um, but you'll see you know you've got fewer stitches in the green you've got more stitches in the gray because the gray is a longer color here with this one and unfortunately I lost the label and I don't remember what this is um, this is a yarn I got at Walmart it looks kind of like this um, it's got some sparkles running throughout it um, in this one the color changes are pretty consistent. So you've got, you know, I think five or six stitches of brown, you've got five or six stitches of gray, um, and the purple is actually on either side. So you have two stripes of purple with that same five or six uh, stitch that you're getting out of there. So that's when you'll get that nice sort of similar length. Um, this is Mexicana here, and you can see you're sort of doing the same thing here. Three stitches, three stitches, three stitches out of each color. So you're going to get those similar width stripes that go upon, uh, up on your piece. Um, and the same thing here, this is, uh, I forget which one this is, I had the label and I lost it already. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to show you guys how exactly I figure out if the yarn itself will pull when I go to the yarn store. So let me see if I can get my phone set up here without it falling over on me. Um, oops, hopefully that's going to stay up there. Okay, so when I go to the yarn store, and I pick up a yarn, and this is the yarn that I made this cowl out of here. What I'll do is I'll pull out a bunch of the yarn. Okay, hopefully I won't get a knot in it like I just did. Um, so I'll pull out all the yarn. Okay, I'm gonna ignore that for a second. So I'll pull out the yarn until I find the first distinct color change. And I like this one here from the dark brown to the blue because it's really easy to see that that color is changing. And I'll pull and I'll pull and I'll pull until I get to another dark brown blue change. And then I will line those up so that it is going in the same direction and I'll match that change as well as I possibly can. Um, and then I'll just continue to pull out the yarn and I'll continue to let it go through. And you see there's a pretty hard to see change here between the blue and the sort of teal color. Um, and I'm going to keep going because one match is good, but you actually want the whole cycle to match. And um, if you're willing to stand in the yarn store and pull out the yarn pretty far, you want to make sure the cycle continues to go because you might get one loop 
um, and then find that the next loop doesn't match. So here we have another change from the green to the gray, and you can see that that's pretty close together. It's not exact, um, which is why tension becomes an issue when you're doing this, because the changes are not exactly the same length. So some of them you might have to tighten up, some of them you might have to loosen. I'm going to continue to go here. Now I have another matchup of that gray and brown, and I'm just going to keep going. And like I said, you can keep doing this forever and ever and ever and make a big loop. And as long as this stays fairly consistent, you're always going to have uh, something that will pull for you. Again, that works the same with this super long carry in the keys. I did not pull this one out at two to check and see if it would do that. I just sort of uh, went with it when I got home and I checked it and it, it did definitely work. Um, same thing here. I have this yarn. I think I got this one at Michael's. This color is a landscape. Um, first the soft and shiny. This is a super soft yarn. Um, for this one though, I want to uh, show you this will pull, but you have to be careful when you're pulling this yarn out. So the very first color change I see is a nice distinct brown to blue color change. So I'm going to go along and see until I find another nice dark brown to blue color change. And I do find that right here. So I, I'm going to do my match up again. I'm going to make sure that the loop is going in the same direction. And I'm going to start pulling. And great, so far I have a match up, except that when I get here, you can see that this no longer matches. So if this was truly the color cycle for this yarn, it would be more of a random cycle. And this yarn would not pull, because now you can see I have a brown and a blue, and I'm no longer getting matching colors. Fortunately, though, what happens is that the first brown to blue color change that I find is not the actual cycle in this yarn. Um, so that is this one. I'm going to keep going till I find the next one. And now I'm going to match up my yarn. And I'm going to see that. Okay, good so far, good so far. Ah, there we go. Now I've actually found the color cycle in this yarn. And this yarn will work. So if you're using, I believe it's uh, the Marley Bird method, where you're chaining through that first sequence, make sure you actually know where that sequence ends. Um, and make sure you've checked your yarn to make sure you get this sort of oops, a nice big loop of matching colors. All right, guys, I hope that helps, and this video was much clearer than the last one. Good luck with your pooling.